Most people think survival is about food storage, weapons, or remote locations. They spend months studying maps, memorizing terrain, and stockpiling essentials. But in the modern world, there's a threat that quietly defeats all of that preparation. Before you ever see it coming, heat. You can hide from the human eye, camouflage yourself against forest or concrete ruins, but you cannot hide from something that sees temperature instead of shape. Drones don't care about foliage, and satellites don't care about paint or netting. Thermal sensors see only one thing, what's warmer than everything else around it. And humans are always warmer. That's where most shelters fail. Traditional bunkers, cabins, and hidden rooms are built to keep people safe and warm. But in doing so, they often trap heat in ways that make them glow like beacons to thermal cameras. A ghost shelter is different. It isn't just hidden, it's thermally deceptive. It's designed to blend into the background temperature of its environment, fading into noise instead of standing out as a target. This isn't science fiction. It's applied physics, field craft, and lessons pulled straight from military history and cold weather survival. To disappear from thermal detection, you first have to understand how it works. Thermal sensors don't see walls or camouflage. They detect differences in temperature. Anything that breaks the natural thermal pattern of an area becomes instantly visible. A human body averages around 37 degrees Celsius, which makes it a glaring signal in cold environments and still noticeable in warm ones. Even urban settings aren't safe. Concrete absorbs heat during the day, but a living person inside a structure creates irregular heat leaks through cracks, vents, and weak points. These anomalies are what sensors lock onto. That's why location matters before construction even begins. The best ghost shelters are built where the terrain already works in your favor. Soil is one of the most effective thermal regulators on Earth. Just a few feet underground, temperatures stabilize year-round, which is why root cellars and dugouts have been used for centuries. Dense forests help as well with layered canopies breaking up heat patterns and forest floors absorbing warmth slowly. Rocky terrain, shaded slopes, caves, and overhangs also reduce contrast by blending heat into stone that naturally holds thermal mass. Water is another powerful ally. Streams, river banks, damp soil, and marshy ground distort thermal readings because water absorbs and redistributes heat efficiently. A shelter built into a cool riverbank, or near, consistently moist ground allows body heat to bleed away instead of rising into the air. What you want to avoid are ridgelines, open fields, exposed hillsides, and dry elevated ground. These areas create sharp thermal contrast making anything warm stand out immediately. Once the location is chosen, construction becomes a matter of layers. Heat moves through conduction, convection, and radiation, and a ghost shelter disrupts all three. The innermost layer focuses on comfort and immediate insulation. Natural materials like straw, moss, wool, dry leaves, and plant fibers trap air slowing heat movement. These materials were used long before modern insulation existed, and they remain incredibly effective when packed tightly. The next layer is where most people make mistakes. Reflective barriers don't stop heat, but they redirect it. Foil, emergency blankets, or reflective sheeting bounce radiant heat back inward instead of letting it migrate outward. When placed correctly, these layers force warmth to linger inside the shelter rather than escaping in a concentrated pattern. The outer layer is the disguise. 
soil, rock, wood, debris, or rubble that matches the surrounding environment absorbs heat at the same rate as everything around it. This prevents the shelter from forming a clean thermal outline that sensors can easily identify. When done properly, heat doesn't escape quickly or evenly. It leaks slowly, irregularly, and unpredictably, just like natural ground warmth. But even the best insulation fails without proper ventilation. A sealed shelter becomes a buildup of heat and moisture, and eventually that energy forces its way out. When it does, it creates a thermal plume that's easy to spot from above. Smart ventilation is the solution. Heat should never vent straight upward, where rising warm air creates a vertical signature. Instead, ventilation should move horizontally or downward before dispersing. One effective method is trench venting, where warm air travels through shallow underground channels filled with soil or gravel. As it moves, heat is absorbed into the earth and released gradually over a wide area instead of one visible hot spot. Vent exits should be placed near rocks, roots, fallen logs, or damp soil, so escaping warmth blends into natural thermal variation. Fire management is just as critical. Open flames are thermal disasters. Even small stoves can betray a shelter if heat isn't controlled. When cooking or heating is necessary, heat sinks become essential. Dense materials like stone, water containers, or metal absorb heat and release it slowly. Insulated stoves that direct warmth into walls or floors rather than outside air dramatically reduce thermal spikes. The goal isn't comfort, it's control. The shelter's exterior must behave like the environment itself. Moss, wet soil, leaf litter, and natural debris don't just hide visually. They regulate heat exchange. These materials warm slowly during the day and cool slowly at night, preventing sudden temperature changes that thermal sensors detect instantly. This approach isn't new. During World War II, soldiers used wet blankets, earth coverings, and layered insulation to hide encampments from aerial reconnaissance. They learned quickly that clean shapes and exposed heat were deadly mistakes. Once a ghost shelter is built, it isn't finished. It has to be tested. Modern handheld thermal cameras are now affordable enough for civilians to use allowing you to see exactly what an observer might detect. Walking the perimeter at different times of day reveals weaknesses that aren't visible to the naked eye. Sometimes small adjustments, adding soil, redirecting a vent, or dampening a hot spot can dramatically reduce detectability. This iterative process mirrors real military concealment practices. Nothing is perfect the first time but refinement brings invisibility closer with each change. The concept applies across environments. In northern forests, a small log shelter lined with insulation and reflective layers, topped with moss and earth, can disappear thermally. In urban ruins, basements and crawl spaces provide natural buffering when reinforced with insulation and indirect venting. Even temporary shelters like tents or tarps can reduce thermal signatures when layered carefully and positioned intelligently. Ultimately, thermal invisibility isn't about hiding, it's about blending. You don't fight sensors directly. You confuse them, slow heat, spread it, and make your presence unremarkable. When technology is designed to find you, survival depends on becoming part of the background. Treat heat as an adversary, study how it moves, and design around it. Do that and an ordinary shelter becomes something else, entirely a place that doesn't announce itself, a structure that exists quietly within the landscape. A ghost shelter.